I grew up with a lot of curiosity about the PlayStation. I was a Nintendo kid. My first console was the N64. My earliest video game memories were with Super Mario 64, Smash Bros, and Diddy Kong Racing. I didn't own a Sony console until the PS3. I bought that one with my own money a few years after it came out. Over the years, I've definitely had a lot of fun exploring the PS1 and PS2 libraries and experiencing a lot of wonderful games that I previously hadn't touched. But I don't have a lot of nostalgic bias for the PlayStation like a lot of others have. There are a ton of games for these consoles that I still haven't touched. But recently, I played a PS1 game that I found to be really interesting and kind of underrated, and I thought talking about it would be pretty fun. That game, as you've probably gathered from the title of the video, is Tale Concerto. I'm going to be talking about the entirety of its plot, so if for whatever reason you want to play this game completely blind, there's your spoiler warning. Anyway. Tale Concerto was released in Japan in 1998. It was developed by CyberConnect2, a studio best known for the Dot .hack series, as well as quite a few anime fighting games. Their first published product was Tale Concerto for the PS1, though. It was in development for about two years. Bandai published the game, and at the time, they were really excited to have a colorful 3D platformer with a cute art style under their belt, as they were really in their heyday at the time. Mario 64 and Nights into Dreams had both come out in 1996 when they started development on Tale Concerto, you know? This was the time for this type of game. They hired Nobuteru Yuki, a well-known manga artist, to design the characters, and the cute character designs and art style is probably the first thing you notice about Tale Concerto. It's definitely the thing that drew me in the most. It's just really pleasant and nice to look at. All of the artists and 3D modelers that worked on this game did a really fucking good job. Their art style kind of reminds me of Mega Man Legends, and I mean that as a huge compliment. A lot of people apparently agreed with me too. When this game appeared at the 1998 Tokyo Game Show, it drew a big crowd because of its visuals and because of how fun it looked to play. Tale Concerto made its way to the West the very same year on the PlayStation Underground Jam Pack demo disc of 1998 with Japanese text and audio. It wouldn't see a full translated English release until late 1999 though, through publisher Atlas. Despite how cute and popular it seemed to be before its official release, and despite how well it was received both critically and by fans, it didn't sell super well in Japan or or in the West, and this kept it from receiving a proper sequel despite the dev team really wanting to make one. CyberConnect has, at the very least, developed a few spiritual successors in games that take place in the same universe over the years, including a DS title and a cool strategy RPG that came out last year that's on modern consoles and PC and stuff. I'd really like to try it out sometime, it's called Fuga Melodies of Steel, but yeah, Tale Concerto. Let me take a minute to talk about the quality of the animated cutscenes. They're fantastic and animated very well, despite the obvious FMV compression that they went through to fit on a PS1 disc. The opening cutscene of this game is beautiful and vibrant and shows off the cute cast of characters. In the English version that I played, it features a nice instrumental orchestrated musical piece that accompanies the visuals nicely, but it's inferior to the original Japanese audio, featuring a hauntingly beautiful vocal performance from J-pop singer Kokia before she started her official music career. It's an incredible incredibly lovely piece of music, one of the prettiest and most atmospheric songs I've heard, and it's a genuinely perfect first look into the world of this adorable little game. If you're interested in hearing the full version of the song, just look up For Little Tale on YouTube. It's really, really great. Anyway. Tail Concerto puts you in the shoes of Waffle, a police officer living in Porto, a floating island in the sky that exists in an archipelago known as Prairie. Waffle has a dream about a girl he knew when he was a child where he gives her a blue pendant to get her to stop crying. He wakes up and is excited about his day off from work for about two entire seconds before he gets a call from his boss, the chief of police, about some shenanigans going on in Rasaka, a neighboring island. There's a gang of kittens and cats that cause mischief and tumult called the Black Cats Gang, and lately they've been wreaking havoc a little bit. There's a bit of unrest between the dog people and cat people that make up the inhabitants of Prairie. We'll get into what their motivations are soon, but for now, let's see what Waffle does when he gets to Rasaka. Oh, Jesus Christ, they blew up that warehouse. Is that guy dead? Oh, okay, he's fine. Getting blown up a little bit is fine. Shake it off, man. He actually gives us a nice little tip here. You may notice that Waffle is piloting this sweet-ass mech with big arms, perfect for grabbing and throwing things and smacking shit around. This is gonna make up about 50% of the combat. 
Hey, they're throwing bombs at me. What the fuck? Come here, you little shits. Get over here. You're going in the timeout orb. All of you are going in the timeout orb. Alright, that's the first warehouse. Let's capture all the kittens in the other two. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay, fuck. Got him. Let's follow that blimp we saw earlier and get to the bottom of this. I think it's funny that Waffle wears his police cap backwards. He's just really fucking cool. I really like the way piloting his mech feels, too. I really like how when you jump while running, he extends his arm like you're a ballerina. You're in this big powerful robot, but you're so agile and graceful. You can tell that Waffle is kind of a gentle type of guy. He moves carefully, with precision. You can tell he doesn't want to hurt anyone. Later on, you meet this other dog guy named Cyan, who works as a guard at the Royal Palace, and he moves with a lot of bravado, with his arms swinging around and stuff like he's hot shit. You can tell that he doesn't have the same gentle nature that Waffle has. I may be reading a bit too much into it, but these little details kind of make this game stand out to me. I also love how if you keep mashing the jump button, Waffle's mech flails its arms, trying to stay afloat. It's really cute. Anyway, the blimp. We head into the town square and find some kittens running around. Waffle's mech is also equipped with a gun that shoots out these bubbles. It makes capturing delinquents and criminals much easier, and it's much kinder than having a stun gun or laser gun or something. Very fitting of Waffle's character. A nice and sobering reminder that the only good cops that exist are fictional characters. But we wrestle up the rest of these crazy kittens and, uh, oh man, this is killing me. Look at how cute this graffiti is. Love it. Anyway, the Black Cats gang's leaders are at the top of this engine tower in the town square. We need to head up there now, and stop them from causing any more trouble. We enter the tower and give the engineer inside some coal that one of the kittens swiped earlier. We can now use the elevator to go up and come face to face with- Black Cats gang, you're under arrest! What? Is that you, Officer Waffle? Uh, he's- he's just doing his best, alright? Panda, what are you doing here? It's me, Panda! I'm trying to ambush the Black Cats gang! Yeah, right. And you? How are you, Officer Wobble? He's having the worst day of his fucking life. He has to work on his day off. So I really like these three sisters, Alicia, Flair, and Stair. Alicia, the one with the eye patch, seems to be the leader. I really like this cutscene because despite how short it is, it perfectly shows off all three of their personalities. They've been wreaking havoc in Rasaka because they want this magical crystal thing that was in the ruins above the engine tower. Oh, is this the crystal? That was easy! Let me see! Oh, let me see! Oh, wow, it's beautiful! Flair, did you wash your hands after you ate that candy? Hey! You idiot! You got chocolate! all over the crystal! Flair is my favorite. She's the dumb one. You must be the leaders of the Black Cats game. Freeze! You're all under arrest. What? Who do you think you're talking to? Oh. You... you're... And you're... Hey, hey, hey! Well, what's going on? Is that you? Alicia? Shut up! I don't know you! Don't you remember me? You lived next door to me when you were eight years old. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll show you what happens to people who mess with the Black Cats gang! Flair, Stare, are you ready? Yes! Sure. By my Wu Tang style. Bring the motherfucking buckets! Yeah, this first boss is not hard at all. You just shoot them with your bubble gun a couple of times and they run away with their tails between their legs. The sisters fly off and leave the crystal they were trying to get behind. Real unprofessional. These dumb kitties don't know nothing. It also appears that Alicia is that same girl that Waffle had a dream about this morning. Things seem to have changed over the years. I guess they aren't friends anymore. Officer Waffle! God, why does he sound like that? Panta shows up to give us a message from HQ and I can't get over this little fuck. Look at his radio, it's as big as he is. He really is just doing his best, isn't he? The chief of police is happy that we got the cats to stop bombing Rasaka, but he puts us in charge of the entire Black Cats gang case. Waffle just wants to go home and enjoy his day off, but it's not happening. 
Sorry, bud. The chief of police also shows us how useless he is by ignoring Waffle's question about the crystal that he found. He won't even hear anything about it. Whatever. Let's go chase some fucking cats around, I guess. Thanks, Panta. Well then, I think I'll go and talk to the townspeople again. Since we got the black cats to leave for Asaka, the people living there aren't afraid to come out anymore and they opened up access to downtown. We'll head there and talk to some of the locals for information, but first let's see what the sisters are up to now that we've chased them off. Oh no, I'm all dirty. I need to take a bath. Who's there? <laughs> I'm sorry, did I startle you? What are you doing here? Well, well, well. This isn't like you at all. The Pris sisters of the Black Cats gang have been beaten by a stupid cop, eh? You've wasted all the wonderful weapons I've given you. He looks like this extremely normal, not suspicious looking guy named Fool is supplying the Black Cats with weapons and vehicles in exchange for the crystals. You will! collect all five crystals hidden throughout prairie as you promised right yeah whatever you just better keep your part of the bargain yes of course I'm just a simple merchant so credibility means everything to me I don't like him. He, he smells like fish. Well said, Flair. Anyway, now that Rasaka is free from danger, we can go downtown. None of the hub areas that you can explore in this game are terribly big or super detailed, but they're charming and memorable nonetheless. I like that you see this guy trying to clean up the graffiti after everything that just happened. We can go into people's houses and stuff, and the way Waffle looks so cramped in his big stupid mech when he's standing in people's homes is really funny to me. Like imagine you get invited to your girlfriend's parents house for the first time but you're 8 feet tall and 3 feet wide and you keep accidentally bumping into shit. You're doing your best to be funny and charming and sociable but you're just breaking things and knocking shit over because you're so big. Downtown Risaka is just this one street featuring some homes and businesses, and talking to people on the street for clues is how we progress the game here. Cop style, yeah? We find out from this guy that the Black Cats gang are interested in the mine at Fairzen, another neighboring island. Apparently they found out there's a crystal hidden in the mine, and Waffle logically concludes that that's probably the place they're gonna hit next. If we talk to this lady over here, she tells us about the Airleaf Islands, and Waffle goes, Damn, that's crazy, rate right my fit. We can head over to the Airleaf Islands whenever we want now as well, but for now, let's head to Fairzen. We're treated to a cutscene of Princess Teria and her butler flying in her personal airship, also heading to Farazin because the miner workers there just uncovered the head of the Iron Giant very recently. The Iron Giant is this ancient entity that is a legend among the people of Prairie, apparently created as a weapon to win a war between two old world civilizations. Unfortunately, the princess's airship is hijacked by our favorite kitty dipshits, and as soon as Waffle gets to Farazin, he's greeted by the princess's butler in hysterics. What happened? The Black Cats gang have kidnapped the princess. Princess? You mean Princess Teria? Yes, that princess. You know, most of the voice acting in this game is pretty good for what it is, but some of it is, uh, well, you know. I have a soft spot for corny voice acting. I grew up with English dubbed anime, and it's not something that really bothers me. But some of these performances aren't, you know, the best. The worst voice in the game is a little later on, and you'll know it when you hear it. The main character's English voices are all fine, though. Waffle is voiced by Lonnie Manella. She also voiced Rouge and Omachow in Sonic Adventure 2. And apparently she also voiced Bubsy the fucking Bobcat. What a queen. So we figure out that the sisters took the princess up there, so we've got to do a little climbing and platforming to get up there. No biggie. Oh, fuck. Whoops. You know, I really, really like the portrait sprites they use for when characters are talking. They're really cute and expressive and nicely animated. 
It really gives this game a lot of personality, I think. Lucky we came here looking for a crystal, but it looks like we found ourselves a princess, too! <laughs> Do you think you can get away with this? Untie this rope! Let me go! Let me go this instant! Oh, pipe down! Princess Teria! Waffle! Darn, you found us already! Stop this! Let Princess Teria go! Well... First of all, give back the crystal I left it for Sokka! Okay... Now release the princess! No! I said first of all, didn't I? One more request. Find the crystal hidden in the mine. If I bring it to you, you'll release the princess, right? Don't. Don't listen to them. You keep quiet. Yes. If you bring the crystal to me, I'll let the princess go. Alright, we've got to head into the mine to find the crystal so we can save the princess. Cool. The mine seems a little confusing at first with the differently numbered pathways and hubs you go to, but it's a lot more simple than it appears. Basically, you just follow the path and we'll end up where one of the kittens has swiped the crystal already. There are some side paths we can take to pick up some collectibles and stuff. Oh, fuck. Missed that one. But anyway, let's just get this crystal back to Alicia. There's this jump here when you're heading back to the beginning of the mine that actually kind of kicked my ass when I first played this. When I was recording here, I managed to get it first try, no problem, but the first time I just kept having to reload my save state until I could get the timing down. Really wonky. Also, yeah, sorry if this breaks the immersion or whatever, but I'm playing this shit on an emulator. I don't have a PS1 in person, and I'm also not the fucking CEO of Amazon. Shit. Let's, let's climb back up there. Here's the crystal. Now let the princess go. We give the second crystal to the sisters and they make good on their promise to release the princess. But Alicia's clearly got some personal shit going on. She seems to have a vendetta against the dog people of Prairie specifically. Alright man, we'll unpack that later, but first let's beat them up in a fight again. This boss is a bit more interesting than the first one. You can throw the boulders that fall when they crash into the wall at their machine, but it's still pretty easy. This game in general is pretty easy, especially considering the era it came out in, but it isn't boring or anything, just pleasant. But anyway, after we bring the motherfucking ruckus for the second time, we get both of the crystals back, and the princess invites us back to her castle to meet her dad, the king. I was so scared today. I've never been kidnapped before. Teria, I beg you to behave more like a princess. Well, I don't regret what happened. Because I was able to meet Waffle. Huh? Nice, Waffle. I make this face when women talk to me, too. Why don't we go back to Praria Castle together? My father will be pleased. I think Praria is the capital of Prairie. It's the biggest island in the center of the map. I'm guessing the majority of people in the kingdom live here. Waffle again proves himself to be incredibly relatable by trying to bullshit his way out of being invited to the castle. But the princess insists, and we meet her dad. Worst voice in the game is a little later on. You'll know it when you On our way out of the castle, we meet Cyan for the first time. He's jealous of the attention Waffle's getting and proposes a contest, but Waffle's too cool to care about this shit. Also, having the hots for your employer is a bad idea, man. Just saying. Now that we've kicked the black cats out of the fairs and mines, and we know the princess is safe and sound, let's go investigate the Airleaf Islands.
Since Airleaf is too much of a clusterfuck to explore with our airship, we stop at the port where this inventor guy lives. We ask him if he's seen any suspicious cats hanging around, but this guy kinda lives in his own head. He's not listening to us at all. He sees our mech and decides to take this opportunity to test out his latest invention on us. He straps us to a cool jetpack and instructs us to go help someone that apparently got stranded out there. Nice. If you put a jetpack in a game, I'm automatically gonna love it. I'm really easy to please. The jetpack controls pretty well, surprisingly. You don't get a lot of fuel between jumps, so you've gotta be kinda careful not to run out before reaching somewhere you can land, but this part of the game is pretty fun, I like it. We're coming up on our guy now, let's make sure they're okay. <sighs> oh boy, did I sleep. Grandpa? Is that you? Grandpa Russell? So you're the one who got lost in the Airleaf Islands. What an ordeal. I wanted to use a shortcut, but I ended up getting lost. <laughs> oh. Grandpa, driving when you're tired is a really bad idea. Grandpa, you're too fucked up to drive. I'm taking your keys. Ah, uh, you sound like your mama. Anyway, why don't you come with me to do some research sometime? Research? You mean search for the parts of the Iron Giant? Of course. Hurry up, let's go! Grandpa Russell's kind of rash and pushy, but I think overall I dig his energy. He insists on us following him out to accompany him during some research, whatever that means. He takes us to this tiny island out in the middle of nowhere that has this big egg statue on it, and tells us his mildly incomprehensible version of the story of the Iron Giant before he gets restless and goes off to do his own thing again. Yeah, that's cool and all, Grandpa, but we've got shit to do ourselves. Let's head back to Porto and touch base with HQ. It seems like the Black Cats gang has hijacked the Archeonis, this huge royal airship, and are circling around Resaka. Are they planning on, like... HQ tells us to head to the Archeonis and de-escalate the situation. Cool. The Archeonis is really big, and we've got to be careful not to let the wind blow us off before we find a way inside. This section of the game is really short, we just wrestle up all the kittens and get this engineer his toolbox back so he can fix the engine. Easy. Imagine the amount of tragedies we could prevent IRL if we had dogs and mechs to rely on. Anyway, let's head back to Porto again and take a 15 minute smoke break. Maybe eat a sandwich or something while we chill at Waffle's house. There isn't much to do with the crib, other than adjust game options or look at our photo album. This game is littered with these little red boxes that have stars on them. When you collect all the pieces of a photograph, it makes a full photo that you can view in your album. They're all really cute and well drawn and stuff. There are a few little side quests you can do to unlock full photographs, like finding this girl's lost doll in Rasaka. Oh shit, we got a message. What does it say? Huh. What is it? Our Praria informants located the three sisters. It seems that they're heading for the famous tourist spot Grimto. Grimto? Grimto is a cute little island. The Iron Giant's big-ass sword is sheathed in it. It's a really cool visual. Princess Teria! Waffle, let's go, shall we? Let's go? What's going on here? I tried to stop her, but she insisted on coming with us. I apologize. It's my duty to confirm that the information I provided is correct. Besides, two heads are better than one, right? No, it's too risky. Stay here until I come back. You know, Waffle's trying to be responsible and keep the princess out of harm's way, but she's probably safer in the forest with him than out here with this useless dipshit. Bet you 10 bucks she's gonna get kidnapped again. Either way, the black cats are in the forest. We'll table that intel about the abandoned factory for now and deal with the situation at hand. I love the way Grimto Forest looks, with the light filtering in through the gaps in the trees. Once we capture all the kittens in the forest, we find that one of them was holding the purple crystal. Let's head back now. Master Waffle, we have a serious problem. What's the matter? 
I took my eyes off the princess for a moment, and she disappeared. All right, everybody watching, you owe me ten dollars. Thanks so much. I'll go check and see what's going on. Ah, this shithead again. How pathetic, Waffle! How could you have let the princess disappear? You're not qualified to be a guard! But I'm not a guard. Well, anyhow, this assignment is obviously too much for you. I'll take over from here. I know you're in there, black cats! Prepare to meet your maker! I'm just gonna leave him be. Princess Teria! Oh, Waffle. You shouldn't be walking around alone. I'm sorry. I saw the three sisters, so I followed them. What? You saw Alicia and her gang here? Yes, I'm sure they came this way. What's the big idea, stalking Waffle? What about you? Stop getting in the way of Waffle's work. What did you say? Hey, hey, hey. calm down, both of you. Oh, I get it. She's got a thing for Waffle. Probably has for a long time. Interesting position to be in, considering how she feels about the dog people of Prairie. I get it, though. Waffle's a catch. He's just a really nice boy. No! Princess Terrier, stand back! This boss fight is the first one in the game to pose a little challenge. It's not super hard or anything, but when I was first playing, it took me two tries. The difficulty in this fight, and some of the later ones really, comes from the fact that you have no control over the camera. It's actually hard to accurately aim your bubble gun in general throughout the entire game, if I'm being honest. It never gave me an ulcer or anything, but it's definitely not one of the game's strong suits. Playing this game as an adult, I basically just enjoyed my time completely, but if I was a kid again in 1999 playing this shit, some of these bosses probably would have given me a fucking panic attack. I found the best way to deal with the sisters here is to continuously run away, jump and turn around to quickly fire off one measly shot after another, whittling their health bar down. Picking up the bombs they throw just isn't really reliable enough with the tank being as mobile as it is. A little tedious, but I'm still having a great time. Funnily enough, if your movements are precise enough, the tank will actually hit itself with its own bombs. Pretty funny. I'll take it. Asshole. I've captured one of the three Pris sisters. Will you let go of me? Oh no! I gotta save Flair! Flair! 
Alicia and Stair regrettably have to leave Flair behind. Cyan! What was he thinking taking credit for Waffle's work? Actually, it was Cyan who captured Flair. Like a palace guard should, Cyan saved you, Princess Teria. Waffle is the only guard I need. Now, Waffle, let's go catch those black cats, okay? I'm jealous of your way with a ladies officer, Waffle. Oh, I wish I was as tall as you. I wonder what happened to Flair. Cyan brought Flair back to the castle and placed her in one of the holding cells for interrogation, but she's not telling him shit. Waffle takes the opportunity to try and talk to her, maybe learn a little more about why Alicia's doing all this. A long time ago, Preria belonged to the cat people. I was told that the dog people invaded, and there was a fight between them. So the dog people have hated the cat people ever since. I've never heard of such a story. Where did Alicia hear that? I, I don't know. To tell you the truth, we're not real sisters. What? Three years ago, my parents were killed in an accident. And I was sent to an orphanage. I met Alicia and Stare there. I cried all the time, but they cheered me up. They told me they'd be my sisters. That's why I believe everything she says. I understand, but... She says that cat people can never be happy in Praria. So she brings stray cat people together. She's trying to make a country just for us cat people. You know, the eye patch suddenly makes a lot of sense to me now. So, do those crystals have something to do with her plan? Yeah, if we collect all five of them, Fool will... Whoops! Fool? <laughs> Who's that? n n, -n nobody Waffle? Yeah? The dog people really hate cat people? No, Flair, that's not true. Hmm? After Flair and Waffle have a heart to heart, Cyan comes back to try and get more info out of her, but Flair tricks him. This was the first scene that made me think that Cyan isn't such a bad guy after all. Hey! Pull yourself together! Are, are you alright? What should I do for a stomachache? Do I apply ice or heat? Or should I make her lay down and elevate her paws? No, 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 no that, that's not right. You! You tricked me! <laughs> Sorry about that. You. I actually kind of feel bad for the guy now. Like, he's trying his best to do his job, but he's just so stupid that he keeps eating shit. And you know what? I guess since the princess wasn't actually kidnapped again, I actually owe everyone that watches this video $10 now. That's fine. Them's the breaks. Don't bother DMing me on Twitter about it or commenting about it. As soon as I'm done editing this video, I'm personally going to walk to the house of every person that watches it and personally hand them the $10. You don't have to do anything. I'm on my way right now, and you can't do anything to stop me. We touch base with HQ again and find out that the kittens we've sent back to them have spilled on where the factory is. Apparently the cops at HQ have been feeding them and changing their litter boxes, so they had no problem giving up the location. I'm glad the kittens are safe and being well taken care of, though. That's nice. Alright, let's go check out the factory. The factory is visually really nice. I love all the pipes and shit. 
The whole game's got this steampunk aesthetic with valves and bronze pipes everywhere and stuff. Waffle's mech is constantly hissing and emitting steam. This car is steam powered, I'm pretty sure. This was way back before Bioshock came out, and people weren't really tired of steampunk yet. I don't hate steampunk or anything, some of my favorite games have that vibe. It's just definitely a bit been there, done that by this point in time. I'm rambling a little bit here, but I'm just saying I don't think steampunk is lame or anything. I like it for the most part. There's a bit of platforming and exploring to do here. We basically just enter rooms, capture kittens, unlock doors, and progress through the factory. When you're climbing on pipes on the outside of the factory, the game very graciously highlights when you're aligned with the next pipe you want to jump to. I feel like this area would have been like 75% more frustrating without this, and I'm extremely grateful for it. Tail Concerto is a little bit on the awkward side when it wants you to do shit like platforming, but it's generally designed in a very forgiving manner, so it's chill. What do you think Waffle thinks about while he's out here doing this shit? Like all we really know about the guy personally is that he's kind to people and that he hates working on his day off. He has a record player at his house. Do you think he's a music dork? Is he into like, trip hop? Techno? House? Does Waffle like Radiohead? Oh my god. You know, I'm really fucking glad falling off like that just takes a little bit of your health away instead of like, making you lose a life or something. One of this game's strengths is how forgiving and relaxing it is. I'm kind of an anxious guy by nature, and with the world constantly being a fucking nightmare with every single putrid day revealing a new man-made horror beyond my comprehension, games like this are really nice to play, just turn my brain off and run around. It takes us less than 15 minutes to climb to the top of the factory and we're greeted with a bunch of kittens doing repairs on one of the tanks that we destroyed earlier. Time to start blasting again. I actually like this boss fight a lot more than the last one. The fixed camera angle really helps, and it's fun to run around and dodge the giant wrecking ball and kittens in their little fighter planes and stuff. This right here is video games, fellas. <laughs> Think you can catch me? Oh, hey, it's Fool. Let's follow him. Come back here! He leads us to his secret base, but we get nanayed by him and fall in this trap door. Canadian? He looks like a caterpillar, inching his way, <laughs> inching his way up there. Fool's secret base continues the same setup the factory had going on really nicely too, with more pipes and pistons and machinery and shit. It's a bit harder than the factory, with it demanding a bit more from you. The platforming is a little more precise, and there are some rooms where you've got to hit switches to activate moving platforms and stuff, so you can progress. It's still not especially difficult, but you know floor is lava in this room. Eventually, Fool decides to up the ante by rigging the base to self-destruct. Pretty fucking dramatic if you ask me, but whatever. The timer starts and we have five minutes to get to the top. You remember a few minutes ago when I was like, duh, this game is so nice because it's so chill and I have anxiety and blah. Well, I still feel that way. This part isn't that hard. We just climb to the top using these platforms, avoid the hot steam, dodge these swinging spike balls, and bam. No big deal. Oh shit, is this fool study? I wonder if he reads all these or if they're just for show. I bet he's a pretentious asshole and they're just for show. This dresser's cute. <laughs> what a narcissist. I bet he had some of his ribs removed too so he could suck his own cock. Well, we narrowly escaped danger there. I guess Fool was hoping we'd explode in the base and he'd swipe the crystals off of our charred body in the wreckage. But that's not happening today because we're waffle fucking Rybread. I looked it up on the wiki, his last name is Rybread. Yes, it's stupid. Oh shit, look, see? He does like Radiohead. As usual, when we want to progress the game, we head back to Porto. Grandpa Russell contacts us. He wants us to meet him at Fairzen to ask us for a favor. Waffle gets the idea to ask his gramps to analyze the crystals he's been picking up, which is probably the best idea he's had so far. Better late than never, huh, bud? It's good to see you, Waffle. I've been researching the head of the Iron Giant, and something's bothering me. Go see Gray and borrow the translation references for the ancient writing. 
What am I, your servant? <laughs> oh, come on, please help me out. Gray and I don't get along too well. Every time we see each other, we end up fighting. He's on the island of Coolant in the far north. He's a grumpy old guy researching frozen fish in some ancient ice field. Grumpier than you? Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, would you check these out while I'm gone? Hmm, could these be? They're the crystals I found while pursuing the Black Cats gang. These stones were created with the same technology as the Iron Giant. I need to study it more, so go get the translation references, all right? Coolant is one of my favorite areas in the game. Snow and ice levels in games are my shit in general, and Coolant is great. I love the music, and I love the transparent ice along the circular path here, showing the frozen fish underneath. It's a really striking and memorable visual. I've been thinking about this game a lot the past few weeks, but this area specifically has just kind of been living in my head. Grandpa's colleague won't give us the documents that we need until we deal with all the kittens on the island. No biggie. Waffle got his fucking PhD in kitten wrangling. Just deal with all these guys. Aw, oh, they're making snowballs to throw at us. That's so cute. This little guy's having so much fun just skating around. Alright, get in the timeout orb. Alright, another crystal. Cool. Let's go let the grumpy old guy know that the kittens are dealt with so we can get the shit Grandpa wants from him. Did you find something, Grandpa? It's more than something. Most of the mysteries of the Iron Giant have been solved. Really? Yes, let's go back to your house. Grandpa uses the materials we brought to do more research on the crystals and finds out that they were used to power the Iron Giant in ancient times. It seems like Fool is planning on reviving the Iron Giant for some reason? Because he's evil? It's a game for children, dude. Who fucking cares? Oh fuck, we're being attacked. Time to board the Black Hat's airship and take away their internet privileges for two weeks. you like dog people, Flair? Uh, I don't really dislike them. But Alicia does. So I do too. <laughs> Are you going to fight me too, Stare? Yes. I don't get it. Why? I want to determine. Show me your beliefs through your actions. Prepare. This boss fight is a huge pain in the ass at first. Stare and Flare aren't fucking around. The magnet they activate pulls you in, so you've got to run away to keep from getting smushed by the big hammer, and the shockwaves that come out can hurt you as well. This is already pretty tough to deal with, but they shoot out this horrible little missile. It chases you and follows you on a really tight radius, so even if you jump over it, there's a good chance it's going to come back and slap you in the nuts. I found the best way to deal with this boss is to stay as close to the walls as possible and whittle their health bar down slowly. After a few attempts, it wasn't too hard. You just have to play carefully. 
carefully. Just wait for the day you become friends with us dog people on your own. Cool. We'll see you again soon. I want to talk about Stare for a second, because I feel like she easily kind of fades into the background if you're not paying close attention to her. She's kind of the most interesting out of the three sisters in a way. She doesn't show any indication of giving a fuck about establishing a homeland for cat people, and she doesn't even seem to be very interested in causing mischief or unrest or anything. For most of the game, she barely speaks unless spoken to, and I was wondering what she was getting out of all of this, personally. I ended up thinking that she really just deeply cares about her sisters and wants them to be happy, so she goes along with whatever they're doing. She's definitely the most emotionally mature out of the three of them. She doesn't have Alicia's temper or Flair's childlike naivety, and I think that despite her cold and quiet exterior, she's actually a very sweet and loving character. Also, she looks really funny when she runs, with her big sleeves flying behind her. It's really cute. Prepare to meet your maker, Pris sisters! <laughs> well, that was just wonderful, Panta. Thank you. Don't you remember what I promised you? If you collect all five crystals for me, I'll help you establish a homeland for the cat people. You want to protect the kittens orphaned by those dog people, right? I... Waffle! You're the weapons merchant who deals in illegal relics. I'm flattered that you know me so well. However, right now I'm a humble warrior fighting for a future for the cat people. Stand back, fool! I'll beat him and take the crystal. Then everything will be finished, right? Yes, absolutely. Now, if you'll excuse me... Alicia, stop this! He's using you! Shut up! I don't care! This time, I'm gonna kick your sorry butt! Alicia uses a hammer and those evil kitty missiles like the last fight, but instead of a magnet that pulls us in, she yells at us through a big megaphone to damage us. Wow, Alicia. Way to girl boss. This fight isn't nearly as difficult as the last one. The sound waves from the megaphone are a lot easier to deal with than the magnet. No problem at all. Now that we've captured all of the kittens and the Black Cats gang, and things are finally calm throughout Prairie, Waffle decides that he wants to try and find Alicia again, and try to get through to her that she's wrong about the dog people, that dog people and cat people can live in harmony with each other. If you talk to a lot of the local dog people in Prairie, you find out that they don't have any qualms with cat people. In fact, many of them would like to meet them and get to know them. And if we talk to this older guy in Porto, he tells us what he knows about Alicia. She lived in Porto a long time ago as a child, and her father died of some mysterious illness that was exclusive to cat people, and the doctors in Porto couldn't do anything to save him. Now you can read this and think, well what the hell, that's why she hates dog people? That's pretty ridiculous. 
but put yourselves in the shoes of Alicia. Losing her only parent as a little kid probably severely fucked her up. Of course she'd have a clouded view of reality and blame the doctors that couldn't save her dad. This just ended up evolving into a deep mistrust of the dog people. This just means that Waffle, the only dog person that she seems to trust or think highly of, needs to find her and have a serious talk. Let's see if we can track her and her sisters down. Stare is hiding in the forest in Grimtoe. Let's head there first and talk to her. You finally found us. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. Sure. What is it? What do you think of my sister Alicia? What do you mean by that? Alicia suffered a lot when she was young, and her heart is filled with pain. Are you capable of healing her pain? I can, but I know I can listen to her feelings. I'm a good listener. Don't you feel better when you talk to someone about your problems? It's more painful to have no one to talk to. Don't you agree? Waffle, you're very honest. She agrees to come back with us to Waffle's house until I can find her sisters. I don't know how much more of this my heart can take. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Flair is in Rasaka. She's shocked at how nicely everybody has been treating her. And Waffle's like, yeah, dude, I've been telling you this the whole time. Yeah. She agrees to come back with us, too. Okay. that I found all of you. I'll talk to the king about you tomorrow. Alicia, what's the matter? You look pale. Alicia, you must be tired. Why don't you rest? I think I will. Thank you. Hmm. 
It felt like someone was here. Wh the crystal! Where's the crystal? Waffle. I'm sorry. Alicia is unfortunately still smoking on that dum dum pack. She gives Fool the four crystals that she stole from Waffle, and Fool takes her pendant. It turns out that it was the fifth crystal needed to awaken the Iron Giant. All the pieces of it scattered across prairie come together to reform the beast. Now, Iron Giant, kneel before me and show your loyalty! <laughs> What did you expect, dumbass? Alicia flies into the mouth of the Iron Giant to get back her pendant, and we fly in to go save her, and hopefully find a way to stop it from destroying everything and everyone. This part of the game reminds me of Zen and Half-Life, in that they're both the worst part of their respective games. Here it's not terrible because of how short it is, but every time you miss one of these jumps, you fall all the way down and it takes a while to find your way back up. I really like the way this area looks though, floating in this weird liquid and these little alien things flying around. Like what the fuck even are these? Being inside of the Iron Giant is powering up the police mech as well, turning our bubble gun into a green energy blaster. It's kinda cool. The final boss of the game is this weird robot inside of the chest of the Iron Giant. I believe it's supposed to act as a guardian, protecting its core. These crystals are what's powering it. I guess it makes sense that there's a failsafe in place to make sure nobody tries to remove them. This fight is great overall. It's difficult, but it doesn't feel unfair. You've got to watch out for its tells. Leap to the left or right when it charges you. Run away when it shoots out these explosives that hone in on you. Avoid its lasers. It's challenging and fun. Alicia, are you all right? Yes. Phew, I'm glad you weren't hurt. Once we defeat it, it immediately comes back to life with a full health bar. This will keep happening no matter how many times we knock its health down to zero, and it seems like it's completely invincible until we realize that we can remove the crystals to deactivate it when it's disabled briefly in between attack phases. The Iron Giant is starting to collapse! We grab Alicia and escape the Iron Giant as it breaks into pieces and falls into the ocean, and everyone cheers and waves at us as we fly home.
wake up, sleepyhead. <laughs> oh. Here. Oh. This is for you. I don't want it. Oh. Well, if you don't want it, I'll take it. It's not that I don't want it, but I want you to have it. <laughs> the game ends very sweetly, with Waffle giving the pendant back to Alicia again, a perfect parallel to the beginning of the game. It looks like he's finally got his friend back. Tale Concerto isn't the most incredible or genre-defying game I've ever played or anything, but I felt genuinely happy the entire time I was playing it. It's an amazingly cute, charming, and memorable game, one I know that I'll enjoy replaying many times. It's super rare, so buying a physical copy of it isn't feasible for most of us, but if you have a computer, I definitely recommend emulating it and trying it out yourself. It's criminally underrated, and I truly fell in love with the characters and world within it. I'm definitely going to try out Sola to Robo, the DS spiritual successor, from what I've seen, a lot of characters from Tale Concerto actually make appearances in that game. And I'm also definitely going to play Fuga Melodies of Steel. Bamco probably isn't ever going to re-release this game. It didn't sell well, and from the perspective of a big company, it isn't worth putting any time or money into properties that aren't surefire money makers. It's sad, but that's just the world we live in. At the very least, emulation has come a long way and is a viable option for a lot of people to experience games they wouldn't have had access to otherwise. But anyway... I hope you had fun watching the video, and if you get a chance to try out Tail Concerto, I hope you have fun and fall in love with it like I did.